everyone and welcome back or welcome if you are new here my name is May and today I'm so excited to share my anniversary gift unboxing with you all we just got back from Copenhagen my husband and I were celebrating our 12th year wedding anniversary and we had a wonderful time and he also surprised me with not one but two little goodies on this trip now as you can see from the thumbnail and the title of the video one of them might be my last purchase from this fashion house which I ultimately really love but I feel like I have a very well created classic collection from this fashion house and the other one I definitely have a little bit of a story time to share with you all it might have turned out to be a major fail but we'll get into that a little bit later on in this video let's start off on a positive note and that's going to be with my Louis Vuitton unboxing so here she is if you have been watching my channel for a little bit you might know what's in here it was funny because I actually posted a little reel of shopping at the Louis Vuitton boutique which fun fact it is the only Louis Vuitton boutique in Denmark and to be honest with you, I was completely blown away because the boutique was not very big to begin with for being the only one in the entire country. And the stock selection was actually a little bit low as well. Now, one positive that I do have about that entire shopping experience was the customer service in that boutique was over the top by far the best customer service and just shopping experience that we've had in any Louis Vuitton boutique. And we just had such an amazing time chatting with the girls there. It actually turned out that the manager of that boutique was from Fort Lauderdale, which if you know Florida, it's literally like less than an hour away from Miami. So enough rambling, let's get into the cutie inside and I have her here. As I said, I don't have a box, so it's going to be a little bag. Let me turn it around because she is facing the other way. Dun, dun, dun. I know you guys know what bag this is. So here she is. Let's all say it together. Finally, May, you added the Alma BB. As I was sharing with you all, we kind of popped into the boutique and we're just taking a look around. And when the sales associate came over to help us, I did ask if they had this one in stock. And she said that, yeah, she had, I think, a total of two or three. So she was able to bring one out and this one was in excellent condition as it should be. I wouldn't expect any less. But I went ahead and tried it on and I just fell in love. My husband looked at me and he was like, are you finally going to get it? <laughs> I know I have been driving you guys crazy about wanting to add this piece into my collection. So you can only imagine how crazy I've been driving him. Now, the best part of this purchase was that not only was it a 12th year anniversary gift from my husband to me, I personally love when I'm able to add a piece into my collection and it has a sentimental meaning behind Behind it. it just makes me that much more happier whenever I'm gonna grab her and use her but you guys I also was able to save almost $500 by purchasing this bad boy in Denmark I have a ton of videos in regards to VAT refund and shopping luxury abroad if you are from the States so I'll make sure to link those down below for you guys so after doing the conversion from Danish Krones to US dollars and after applying the VAT refund that you do get from living abroad I was able to save a good chunk of money by getting this piece over in Denmark so it only made sense that it was the perfect time to add this little cutie I gotta say I feel like she is gonna be a great addition into my collection I feel like I have good classic Louis Vuitton pieces I've also talked about this in previous videos so I'm not gonna talk your ears off but the Alma Bibi I just think is such a classic piece that has been around the fashion house for many many years I originally loved the Alma in the GM size just because I was such a big fan of larger totes and larger bags in general However, as you guys have seen and as I've mentioned many times, I have been moving towards smaller handbags for quite some time now. I don't go into an office for work, I work from home. And when I do carry a bag, whether it's to run an errand or whether it is to carry it during the weekend, I just feel like a smaller bag is a lot easier for me to grab and go than a big tote where I really don't even have enough things to put inside so it's just basically a big empty space so for that reason I have been drawn to smaller handbags and I basically kind of just redone my collection all over again so as for Louis Vuitton I just feel like I finally added that final missing puzzle piece that I needed to have a really good classic collection 
I know that I always unbox neutral color handbags and just very classic type handbags on this channel. But to be honest with you, if I'm investing a good amount of money into a handbag, I want it to be a timeless piece. I want to be able to not think about it when I'm putting on an outfit and I want to grab one of my bags. As to when you add colors or a specific trendy piece, not that you shouldn't, you add to your collection as you please and what really makes your heart happy. But for me, just knowing that I have a very nicely curated classic colored collection makes me happy. And that is the primary reason why I always just go for very neutral colors. Don't get me wrong, I'll add a little pop of color here and there just for fun. But for the most part, as I'm saying, if I'm gonna spend a good amount of money on a handbag, I want it to be a very timeless piece. Now, I'm sure this is not the first time that you see an Alma BB, so you know the silhouette, you know that it comes with a crossbody, non-adjustable strap. And that is one of the reasons why I hesitated in regards to adding this piece. I knew that most likely I was just gonna opt to carry it top handle, and that is okay. I think I might actually try on my Speedy Bandolier strap to see how it looks that strap is actually a little bit chunkier than the alma strap the alma strap is very very thin which i love i feel like it pairs perfectly with the shape of this bag of course i just wish it was adjustable rather than just a one size fits all sort of situation which it doesn't work out like that and i don't know why these fashion houses haven't already figured that out aside from that i'm just so excited for this red lining that the bag offers i wanted to get a matching wallet and i did ask to see the recto verso in the damier ben because you do have the pop of red in the card slot section on the back but they didn't have it in stock. I am hoping to maybe add that piece for my 35th birthday, which talking about my 35th birthday, if you are enjoying the video so far and you like the vibe around here, please consider subscribing down below. I mentioned it in other videos, but I have set a, a small little goal of reaching 3,500 subscribers by the time I turn 35, and that is now less than two months away. So we definitely have some time to reach that goal with all of you guys' help. So back to the wallet. I feel like it'll be such a cute, matchy matchy moment along with my mini pochette which is also in the damier band print and even though this bag is pretty small it actually fits a good amount i'll make sure to do a more dedicated review video with like the straps and what fits inside and so on and so forth later down the line as i use her a little bit more and sort of build my opinion around her so this is the cute little handbag that has officially made it into my collection I do think that I am officially done with Louis Vuitton at least for a few years now. They haven't really brought out anything that has called my attention. I am not adding SOGs into this, so don't call me out when I do any SOG unboxing in the future. I feel like Louis Vuitton always has the cuties. The cuties? I do feel like Louis Vuitton always has the cutest SOGs and I love their limited edition Christmas animation series that they bring out every single year. But as for handbags, I do feel like, as I previously mentioned, I have curated a great classic collection from the fashion house and I'm not even gonna get into the price points for some of these handbags. I always said that when they released the undergo tote in the PM size, I was gonna run into the boutique and buy it. It was released, as we all know, for a whopping $3,500. I mean, mind blowing and with a canvas strap. I'm not gonna get into that because this video will be 300 years long. So I'm just very, very happy and excited that I added this one. I know that a ton of you guessed it even before watching this video. I did post a reel over on my Instagram sort of teasing you guys and a few of you messaged me and I just had such a good laugh with you all because it's so funny how you grow this sort of community and you build these genuine friendships with individuals that love talking about handbags just as much or even more than I personally do. I'm also thinking about maybe doing a how to style the Alma BB video, sort of like giving you some outfit inspiration for different occasions. You guys know I love doing my little outfit inspiration videos. So let me know down below if that would be something that you would like to watch. Here we have my second piece as part of my wedding anniversary gifts now I will get into the unboxing but after I share with you guys what's inside this little bag 
stay tuned because I do have a little bit of a not so positive customer experience with this piece. My husband actually surprised me at the London Heathrow Airport. They did have a Cartier boutique and he was like, don't you have a ring in mind that you wanted to add? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> So we went into the boutique, we took a look at a couple of rings that I had been eyeing and I was able to add into my little Cartier collection another ring. It is none other than the Justin Clue ring. This is in the slimmest option that they have available and it is in their yellow gold. Now here's where I get to the failing part. So we had just gotten to the airport after a nine hour flight. I didn't take into consideration that all my fingers were extra swollen from that long flight. So I tried on the size 55 and it felt fine. It felt comfortable. So I went ahead and told the lady, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. This is the one that I'm going to take. And then as I'm paying for the ring, she also tells me, do you want to wear it out? And I was like, sure, why not? I am a huge advocate of enjoy your things right when you get them because you never know. So I went ahead and put on the ring. As I said, again, it was very comfortable on my finger. I did opt to get the size that would fit both on my middle finger and on my index finger since I do plan to play around with both of those. So Everything is all good. We leave the airport. We have to catch another flight over to Denmark and I have my ring on the whole time. I have my ring on the next day. We go out and I start feeling that it starts moving from side to side a little bit more than I would like for it to. So I told my husband, you know what? I actually feel like it might be a little bit loose. Nothing too major, but it just felt, as I said, just a little bit more loose than I honestly like my rings to move around my fingers. So I told him, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to go ahead and put it away. Let's go and visit the Cartier boutique here in Denmark to see what they say. So we did that. To my surprise, if you purchase things overseas, every country is different in the sense that they tax things differently. So if you buy something in London, then they're not able to exchange it or return it or anything like that in a whole nother country. At least this is what the SA and Cartier explained to me when I was in Denmark. So I went into the store, I explained to him what happened, he explained that, and then I just said, okay, well, do you have the size 54 just so that I can try it on to ultimately determine if it's just in my mind or if it is that it is a bigger ring and it is what it is. I'll try to see if I can exchange it back in London because we did go back from Denmark, did a layover in London, and then back to Miami. So I tried on the 54 and guys, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell the difference. Like the 54 was a smidge, a smidge tighter. But if I went down to the 53, then now we were getting to an uncomfortably tight ring. If you have seen the Justin Clue ring, it is basically a nail. So it has a circular head at the top and that is what ultimately makes the sizing of this ring so complicated. It is not a basic round ring like any other ring that you might have. Let's say this is the love ring from Cartier and it is just a simple round ring. When you look at the Justin Clue ring, that nail head, it doesn't lay flat with the other part of the ring that comes around. I'm not gonna be the best at explaining this, but I will try. So what happens is that the nail head actually continues under that part. So now you need to take that into consideration when you are putting on the ring and considering the sizing. Because if you get, let's say, your normal ring size, then that bottom part of the nail head is definitely going to dig in. After everything happened that I spoke to the sales associate in Denmark, I went on a YouTube rabbit hole of Cartier just include rings and sort of seeing what people had said, how they had gone about picking their sizing. And a lot of people explained that, that the nail head just makes it very difficult for you to determine exactly what size you should go with. So after I tried on the 54, I ultimately told myself, you know what? I live in Miami. Miami has a warm climate 
paint probably all year round so I am bound to get a little bit swollen from time to time on my fingers I don't want to go to the 54 if I really don't feel the difference I just wanted to wait it out and see if I went into the London boutique once again and see what the lady told me that did not happen our flight from Denmark got a little bit delayed so by the time we made it to London we only had about an hour and a half in order to connect and catch our flight over to Miami so I was not going to risk it we made it back home and on Monday morning, the first thing I did was I reached out to the Cartier boutique here in Miami. Now here's where the story gets fun. So I called and I let them know what had happened. I bought the ring abroad. This is what happened. My fingers were stolen. I just wanted to sort of go in, try on the 54 again now that I'm back home, see how it feels. She's like, unfortunately, this is a case by case scenario since you did purchase abroad. And once again, the taxes topic comes up. You know, there is taxes over there that it might be a difference here. So you might have to pay a difference if we do an exchange, which I was not worried about because after conversion, since we did get it in the UK, we actually ended up paying more for the ring than what it would have cost me if I would have gotten it in Miami. So I told her that's totally fine. I just want to go in and see what I can do. Perfect, you can come in at any time. Okay, wonderful. My husband gets home from work and of course the impatient person in me was like, please, 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 can we go to the design district? I wanna figure this out as soon as possible. So we headed over to the design district, which is where they have the closest Cartier boutique. I went inside, the lady told me, were you told that this and that? Yes, I was told everything. I still wanna see what I can do. I was sort of talking to the SA and she's like, let me see if you can even exchange it. Let me go back and talk to my manager, blah, blah, blah. She does all of that and all of this story is basically to tell you that just the experience itself from Cartier was very disappointing in my opinion, not because of the fact that the final verdict was that they weren't going to let me exchange the ring. Thankfully, I don't feel like it is a huge difference in sizing where I feel like I made a mistake purchasing the 55. The whole thing was just the customer service and the case by case exception excuse is very, in my opinion, uncalled for for this type of fashion house. She came back with the ring and said, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to exchange it because it is extremely worn. Exactly her words. I mean, I looked at Rudy, my husband, and he's like, extremely worn. Like I literally wore the ring out of the boutique that day and took it off probably midday the next day and put it back into the box and never used it again. So she says that, yeah, with the magnifying glass that the manager has used, she can see that there's a lot of wear on the nail head. I'll try to get as close as possible to share with you guys the wear on the nail head, but <laughs> I laugh because next to us was a girl trying on a couple of rings and I'm like, yeah, that wear is probably from you guys taking out the rings and letting people try them and then selling that exact same ring to the customers. So I don't wanna be a Debbie Downer. I wanna enjoy the fact that I was able to add a wish list piece into my collection. And I'm very happy that my husband surprised me for it. It was sort of a anniversary gift as well. So it has that sentimental value to it that I'm very happy for. But I just wanted to share with you guys the experience that I had throughout the whole process. I'm not looking, and I knew going in that there was a huge, huge, huge chance that I was not gonna be able to exchange it. And I was okay with that because I don't wanna sound repetitive, but it wasn't such a huge deal that I felt like it was gonna be a huge difference if I wasn't going to be able to exchange it. It was just the entire customer experience that really put a bad taste in my mouth. So putting aside that rant and that experience, I am genuinely happy that I did get to add the ring into my collection. I'm excited to start wearing it and incorporating it with my looks. So this was my little second unboxing as part of my wedding anniversary gifts. Let me know if you've had an experience like this happen to you before with Cartier or with any brands for that matter. I just feel, and I have spoken in regards to this when I went through my whole Pochette Matisse exchange situation, that these fashion houses should do a little bit more I feel like when you're paying such a price point, not only are you paying for the quality of the piece, but you are also paying for a better customer experience altogether. I would love to hear your opinion in regards to this. This is a very safe judgment free zone. So I feel like we can definitely have a mature conversation in regards to those opinions. 
If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I am so, so excited to start wearing both of my pieces. You will definitely see a ton of little reels and photos and boomerangs all over my Instagram as I do style the Alma BB with my look. And I am very happy to start incorporating the Justin Clue ring in my jewelry rotation. As always, I appreciate you all for taking some time out of your day to watch today. I will link another video here for you to watch next if you haven't gotten enough made those today and I hope to catch you all in my next one. Bye everyone!